Hey everybody, welcome. In this episode, we're continuing from what we talked about in the previous episode where we created a use fetch hook. This video, we're gonna be talking about how we can pass in a custom method, header, and body. So basically, we want to create this hook in a way that makes it more versatile so it can be used for more things. So now we should be able to create data, read data, update data, and delete data using this hook. Now there's going to be quite a bit of changes, so we'll see how much we get done in this video. We might move on to a part two after this. We're just going to see pretty much what we need to do is we need to go through one of our existing components and try to replace all of the fetch calls with a call to our new hook. So we're going to start with the customers page. This has authorization and this has a fetch call to add a new customer. So that will show an example of how we can use this hook for posting data and not just getting data. So this is our hook here and we are returning the data and the error status so that we can display something such as a 404 on the calling page. By the end of this, we're going to expand this to return more and we'll talk about better ways of calling it. For now, what we want to do is we want to go up here where we have the URL, and I'm just going to take some extra arguments passed in. So let's just go with a method, headers, and a body. I'm sure there's plenty of ways to do this. I'm just going to take them one after the other sequentially here. And then what we can do is we can include that inside of a custom object here. So where we would normally define these, we're just going to use the parameters. So we'll just pretty much copy the names. So method is going to be the method parameter. The headers is going to be the headers parameter. And the body is going to be the body parameter. That will allow us to pass in custom values for each of these. This means that use fetch can be useful for a lot more things, such as passing in authorization tokens. Now, anything that's going to be the same across our application, we can leave inside of here. So an example of this would be a 401 status code, which would be unauthorized. So if we check for that here, then we don't have to do that in any of our individual pages. So if response.status is 401, then we can navigate to a login page. Pretty much anything we can leave inside of use fetch is something we're not going to have to repeat throughout our application and it'll save a lot of code and reduce bugs. So now we can go into customers and we can try using this. So here we have a use effect that is invoking fetch and passing in authorization and we have the navigate here. We will want to include this previous URL state. So let's go ahead and copy this here and bring it over to use fetch. We'll just include that here. And what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of build on this iteratively. We will start with just checking that the redirect to login is working. But in order to even do that, we're going to have to invoke use fetch inside of our component. So what I'll do is for now, I'm going to comment out this entire use effect so we can reference it if we need for now. And then what we can do is we can remove it later. So I will save that. And now let's call use fetch. So first thing we're going to do is import it. And here we will say use fetch. And this is going to come from one page up into hooks and then use fetch. Now that we have that imported, I'm going to go below all of our constants and invoke use fetch. Now this is going to take a lot more now, so not only will we have the URL, but we're also going to have the method headers and body. So what I'll do is I'm going to say const URL and define that here, which I'm just going to take from this line, so not changing much. So now we have the URL. The method is going to be get, which is the default, so we didn't have that defined down here. And then we will have the headers, which is just going to be this object, oh, dang it, I hate when it does that. The scrolling on Visual Studio Code in Mac is like way too sensitive. I don't know if it's like that for Windows as well, but anyways, we're going to take the headers here. And then lastly, the body, which we currently don't have one, so we don't actually need to pass in anything for that. If nothing is passed in, it just won't be attached to that request. Now let's get the response from this. 
we'll just say const result for now and then I'm going to console log the entire result so we'll say use effect and in here we will just say console.log result couple of issues here let's just go fix these real quick first thing is the way we are importing use fetch it is a default export so we will get rid of these the curly braces there so that fixed that error and now we just have to import navigate into use fetch so we will import that up here so we will say import use navigate and we're also going to have use location from react router dom and then let's make these constants so we'll say const navigate and this will be a call to use navigate and then similarly const location use location so far so good that should have fixed the problem so we can see our site now let's go over to the customers page and we're getting some errors so let's check those out in the console this is just from the display as we didn't change what was actually being displayed on the page so what I want to do is I just want to scroll down to where we have the return and just say return and leave a fragment here which will temporarily ignore this return so we're not going to get any errors displaying on the page we can now do a refresh here and check what data is being returned from the use fetch so we'll expand this the first item in here, index zero, is an array, the customer's array. The next thing in here is the error status, which is currently undefined because we successfully got the customers, so we don't have an error, but you can see that over in use fetch where we return the error status here. So far, so good. If in theory we logged out, let's go ahead and log out. It'll then bring us to the login page. We hit login. It takes us back to the customers page and we get that array. So, so far everything appears to be working. Now I want to talk about how we can improve the way we are returning and passing data. So this is going to use destructuring and it's going to clean up our code a lot and make it more versatile. So right now we are returning an array with data and error status. Well, my preferred way of doing this is to return an object. And if you ever do this where you trade the square brackets for these curly braces it's a shorthand way of having properties with the same name so it would look like this this would also work but since we just have redundant info here we can remove these and pass it back like this what this will do is we'll change the way inside of customers that we are retrieving those values so we can destructure with curly braces and we can grab the data that's being returned and we can grab the error status. We'll save and let's go ahead and change this console log to data and error status. Now let's check over in the console. We're getting the same information. The first thing data is being a, an object with one property customers which is an array and then we have undefined for the error status. I prefer to use this object syntax for returning as it reduces the chance of typing things out incorrectly because we actually have to match the names here. So for example, if I had this as data with two A's and then we said console log data with two A's, well, we're not going to get that information. It's going to be undefined. This is different than if we were using an array. So if we go back to using the square brackets here, and over inside of customers we replaced these curly braces with square brackets we'll save and check over on the site you can see we still get that information even though we changed the names of the variables over on this side and there's a higher chance of misalignment so for example if well first let's change this back to data so everything is aligned if we decided to end up returning two things such as set data and then the error status well in our calling code we're taking data and then error status in a row this is naturally going to grab that second thing in the array so error status is actually going to be a function to set the data definitely not what we want so we can avoid that problem by using curly braces instead and over in the calling code 
using curly braces. So now, even though we've added that new thing here, the set data, our code works as it originally once did because we're using objects and property names instead of arrays, which go off of position. So basically the too long didn't watch version of that is just use objects when you can instead of arrays when you're passing values back and forth. A similar thing can be done over in customers where we are passing all this data. We're passing the URL, the method, and the headers. We have that same potential issue of misalignment over in use fetch where we are taking all this information. So instead we could pass an object and then we could just take the appropriate property names to avoid any issues. Then if the caller passes them in in a different order, everything will work just fine. So what we can do is we can accept an object as a parameter and destructure the three properties from that object called method, headers, and body. So then we would just expect a URL and then any other attributes. You could of course combine those all into a single object. However, I think this structure is a little bit more fitting as it follows the same exact fetch structure you would expect. So now over in customers, what we'll do is we'll redefine this call as an object. So we will surround the get and the headers in curly braces and we will give them property names. So method is going to be get and then headers is going to be this object. Save that, it'll reformat it. This is what it looks like and we should be able to use the site the same way. So we log in and we are getting the customers here inside of this customers array. Alrighty, our code is a lot better. Now we just have to worry about getting the information to display on the page, which currently we have this older customers and set customers state. Well, we can just use the state that comes from the use fetch. So we will comment this out this is going to cause some issues downstream where we are invoking the set state. So I'm just going to comment out any other code that's using it for now. We'll go back and worry about how we can add a new customer after we get the list of customers to be displayed. So right now we'll get an error on the page because customers is not defined. And I commented out the entire new customer function. So why don't we just instead comment out the body of the function that way we don't break any of the uh, wiring so we will comment out the content here and that way we get rid of that error now we just have to worry about the customers you could go in here and basically say data dot customers and then data dot customers dot map and you'll probably need optional chaining so you don't try to access a property on undefined and there we go, we get all of this junk up here and you can see I was doing some testing earlier so I have a bunch of crap in here I need to clean up. This is pretty annoying though because basically we have to now prefix everything with data which gets pretty complicated and confusing. So instead I want to figure out if there's a way we could basically do customers is data.customers. So I'm going to show you a way how we can do this and it's going to have to do with the restructuring you can actually jump into what is being returned. So where we have this data here, we could grab data.customers. So the way to do this is you basically say you want data to be the source and you want this to go inside of a variable called customers. This is going to be in curly braces to say that you want to access a property on data. And then we can just replace our calls to data. We're not going to use data anymore. We'll just say customers. Similarly down here we can remove data and we don't have to do the long chaining. Now this isn't going to quite work. We're pretty close but we're going to get a problem. Cannot read properties of undefined and that's because initially the values returned from our use fetch or undefined until that fetch is complete. An easy fix for this is to just go after this assignment here and say it's going to default to an empty object and this will prevent any attempts of accessing on an undefined. Now taking a look at our site, this stuff pops up and everything is working.
Next up, I wanna talk about adding a customer because it currently is not going to work. So let's talk about how we can make a post in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video is helpful. Lots of information and syntactically pretty complicated. So hopefully you're able to follow along. Stay tuned for the next episode if you want some more practice.